Yashar, Jasher, 18. And Avraham rose and did all that Elohim had ordered him. And he took the men of his household and those bought with his money, and he circumcised them as Yahuwah had commanded him. And there was not one left whom he did not circumcise. And Avraham and his son Yishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. Thirteen years old was Yishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And in the third day, Avraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. And Yahuwah appeared to him in the plain of Mamre and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him. And he was sitting at the door of the tent, and he lifted his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance, and he rose up and ran to meet them, and he bowed down to them and brought them into his house. And he said to them, if now I have found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them, and they turned in, and he gave them water, and they washed their feet. And he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent. And Avraham ran and took a calf, tender and good, and he hastened to kill it, and gave it to his servant, Eleazar, to dress. And Avraham came to Sarah, into the tent, and he said to her, Make ready, quickly, three measures of fine meal. Knead it, and make cakes, to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. And Avraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done. And they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah, your woman, shall have a son. And the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent. In those days, all the people of Saddam and the Morah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against Yahuwah. And they provoked Yahuwah with their abominations. And they strengthened in aging abominably and scornfully before Yahuwah. And... Their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before Yahuwah. And they had in their land a very extensive valley, about half a day's walk. And in it there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage uh, rather, herbage surrounding the water. And 
all the people of Saddam and Demora went there four times in the year with their women and children and all belonging to them. And they rejoiced there with timbrels and dances. And in the time of rejoicing, they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbor's women. And some, the virgin daughters of their neighbors. And they enjoyed them. And each man saw his woman and daughter in the hands of his neighbor and did not say a word. And they did so from morning to night. And they afterward returned home, each man to his house and each woman to her tent. So they always did four times in the year. Also, when a stranger came into their cities and brought goods which he had purchased with a view to dispose of there, the people of these cities would assemble, men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving a little to each man, until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he had brought into the land. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, What is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach to him one by one, and each would show him the little which he took, and taunt him, saying, I only took that little which you did give me. And when he heard this from them all, he would arise and go from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul when they would all arise and go after him and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. And there was a man from the country of Elam who was leisurely going on the road, seated upon his ass, which carried a fine mantle of diverse colors, and the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. And the man was on his journey passing through the street of Saddam when the sun set in the evening. And he remained there in order to abide during the night. But no one would let him into his house. And at that time, there was in Saddam a wicked and mischievous man, one skillful to do evil, and his name was Hedad. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveler in the street of the city. And he came to him and said, Whence come you, and whither do you go? And the man said to him, I am traveling from Chevron to Elam, where I belong. And I passed the sunset and no one would suffer me to enter his house, though I had bread and water and also straw and provender for my ass and am short of nothing. And Hidad answered and said to him, All that you shall want shall be supplied by me, but in the street you shall not abide all night. And Hadad brought him to his house, and he took off the mantle from the ass with the cord, and brought them to his house. And he gave the ass straw and provender, while the traveler ate and drank in Hadad's house, and he abode there that night. 
And in the morning, the traveler rose up early to continue his journey. When Hidad said to him, Wait, comfort your heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And the man did so, and he remained with him, and they both ate and drank together during the day when the man rose up to go. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. You had better remain all night, that your heart may be comforted. And he pressed him, so that he tarried there all night. And on the second day he rose up early to go away, when Hadad pressed him, saying, Comfort your heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And he remained and ate with him also the second day. And then the man rose up to continue his journey. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort your heart, and in the morning rise up early and go your way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass. And while he was saddling his ass, the woman of Hadad said to her man, Behold, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. And now shall he go away from us without giving anything? And Hadad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass to go, and he asked Hadad to give him the cord and mantle to tie it upon the ass. And Hadad said to him, What say you? And he said to him, That you, my lord, shall give me the cord and the mantle made with diverse colors, which you did conceal with you in your house, to take care of it. And Hadad answered the man, saying, This is the interpretation of your dream. The cord which you did see, means that your life will be lengthened out like a cord. And having seen the mantle colored with all sorts of colors, means that you shall have a vineyard in which you will plant trees of all fruits. And the traveler answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awake when I gave you the cord, and also a mantle, woven with different colors, which you did take off the ass to put them by for me. And Hadad answered and said, Surely I have told you the interpretation of your dream, and it is a good dream, and this is the interpretation thereof. Now the sons of men give me four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams. And of you only I require three pieces of silver. And the man was provoked at the words of Hadad, and he cried bitterly, and he brought Hadad to Sarach, judge of Saddam. And the man laid his cause before Sarach, the judge, when Hadad replied, saying, It is not so, but thus the matter stands. And the judge said to the traveler, This man, Hadad, tells you truth, for he is famed in the cities for the accurate interpretation of dreams. And the man cried at the word of the judge, and he said, Not so, my lord, for it was in the day that I gave him the cord and mantle, which was upon the ass, in order to put them by in his house. And they both disputed before the judge, the one saying, Thus the matter was, and the other declaring otherwise. 
And Hadad said to the man, Give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretations of dreams. I will not make any allowance. And give me the expense of the four meals that you did eat in my house. And the man said to Hadad, Truly, I will pay you for what I ate in your house. Only give me the cord and mantle which you did conceal in your house. And Hadad replied before the judge and said to the man, Did I not tell you the interpretation of your dream? The cord means that your days shall be prolonged like a cord and the mantle that you will have a vineyard in which you will plant all kinds of fruit trees. This is the proper interpretation of your dream. Now give me the four pieces of silver that I require as a compensation, for I will make you no allowance. And the man cried at the words of Hadad, and they both quarreled before the judge. And the judge gave orders to his servants, who drove them rashly from the house. And they went away quarreling from the judge, when the people of Saddam heard them, and they gathered about them, and they exclaimed against the stranger, And they drove him rashly from the city. And the man continued his journey upon his ass with bitterness of soul, lamenting and weeping. And while he was going along, he wept at what had happened to him in the corrupt city of Saddam.